Well, this is Baruch Fleischman here at the Tikkun Elevator Caller, and whatever we've got before you here is the Ben Ish Chai. Now, this is Sefer, the, the Ben Ish Chai is the name of the Sefer written here by this famous person we're about to get into, his background. I, I pulled something off of the internet. Uh, this is from Chabad. Now, I'm Ashkenaz, I, a very great admirer. I have learned my teachers have been uh, more or less mostly Sephardim. And as a result of that, um, I have a tremendous respect for the, the davening, especially since the Sephardim follow really the Ari. Here's one of the greatest. Reading uh, the heritage of the Sephardic community, which is brought in the in, in, a, in a series of books by this same man that we're going to be discussing also during these three weeks, is uh, Chaim Beinart, who wrote the history, a tremendous history of the legacy of the Sephardic Jews, what happened in Spain and then what happened to them after the expulsions. Tremendous, tremendous work. One of the places that the great Kabbalists came to was Baghdad. And so, therefore, we have a basic of an origin of where where this is coming from after the expulsion from Spain in 1492. Many people went into the, many of the Spanish Jews went into the Orient, that is, into Turkish-held areas, and some of them wound up in Baghdad. So here we come, and we'll just read as much as we can, little by little, and try to learn the, some background on this famous man. The Chacham Yosef Chaim of Baghdad. That's what he's called, the Ben Ish Chaim. That's the name of the Sefer, really. Chacham Yosef Chaim, known as the Ben Ish Chai, was a highly revered Torah scholar and master of Kabbalah, based in Baghdad, Iraq. He was recognized by the Sephardic community, both locally and abroad, as an eminent halacha authority. So when you're learning the Ben Ish Chai, you're looking at the halacha but from the perspective of Baghdad as well. Yosef Chaim was born on the 27th of Av, which is really coming up not too far from this time, 1832, in a long chain of rabbinic figures renowned for their spiritual influence on the Baghdad Jewish community over the centuries. There was his father, Chacham Eliyahu Chaim, the son of Chacham Moshe Chaim, this man was the head rabbi and leader of Baghdad's Jewish community. Now here's a story. It says, at the age of seven, Yosef Chaim fell in a deep pit in the courtyard of his home while playing with his sister. He was eventually saved by a miracle. And in gratitude to Hashem, he decided to devote his life to the study of Torah. <clears throat> As a young boy, he spent many hours absorbing Torah from the books in his father's extensive library absorbing this. He went on to attend Beit Zika, the Jewish seminary of Baghdad, headed by Rabbi Abdallah Salmeich. When Yosef Chaim was 14 years old, a question arrived for his father from Rabbi Chaim Pelagi. Now this Rabbi Pelagi was the chief rabbi of Turkey. Now all of these things are important to me because these names are people who have contributed tremendously in the commentaries to the Uri and other things as we go through the ages. So we have this 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 head rabbi from from Turkey, uh, this Rabbi Palaji. His father was very busy. So this question that was asked by Rabbi Palaji to the 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 uh, the Chacham Yosef Chaim uh, to his father, uh, his father was very busy and able to answer for several days. So the young Yosef Chaim answered the question in his father's stead. The Turkish rabbi was so impressed with the boy's response that he predicted he would be a great sage. In a letter to Yosef Chaim's father, he enthused, Your son, dear to your soul, has already preceded you and decided this case. May his father rejoice in him. In a special room, now you hit the feeling about who these people are. A special room secluded for study. Yosef Chaim continued to strive towards spiritual perfection, studying all of his Torah day and night. At midnight, he would rise to recite the Tikkun Chatzot, which we are going to be studying uh, to a certain extent now, lamenting the destruction of the Holy Temple, and at sunrise he would recite the morning prayers. For six consecutive years, he fasted by day and ate only at nighttime. Why did he do this? To weaken physical desires that could interfere with his divine service. 
he built a mikvah in his ritual home. Oh, excuse me, he said a, a, a mikvah, which is a ritual bath, right in his home so he could purify himself at any time. At the age of 18, he married Rachel, the daughter of Rabbi Yehuda Samech. So this back to the Rosh Hashiva again. A relative to his teacher, or I guess is a relative to the Rabbi Samech, who was Abdallah Samech. Together they had one daughter and a son, Yosef Chaim. Son. Yosef Chaim was known for the attention he showered upon his children, teaching them Torah and conversing with them, despite his demanding schedule. He often comp uh, composed little riddles and puzzles to entertain them, some which are recorded in his book, Imre Bina. Now, he was the leader of the community in Baghdad. When Yosef Chayev was 25 years old, his father passed away, and he became the unofficial leader of the Baghdad community. The little Chacham, the wise one, the traditional Sephardic title bestowed upon rabbis, that word Chacham, so, so he says, I read it wrong, it's the title Chacham, the wise one, uh, the traditional Sephardic title bestowed upon rabbis was appended to his name. He was known as the Chacham. Despite his young age, he was highly respected, and one of his disciples, Rabbi Dovod Chai HaKohen, testified that if Rabbi Yosef Chaim had lived during the time of the temple, it would never have been destroyed. For unlike then, when the Jews disregarded the admonitions of the prophets, the entire Baghdad community lovely, lovingly obeyed every word uttered by Rabbi Yosef Chaim. During his lifetime, per his influence, all the Jews of Baghdad observed Shabbat and Torah law. Hacham Yosef Chaim refused a salary for his public service. Instead, he supported his family by partnering in his brother's business. He personally funded the publishing of his books, refusing sponsorship or charity, and any income from these books would be distributed to the poor. He was also known to donate his books for free to Torah scholars. Now, there was a day and a time when books were not easy to come by like today. Well, to use the phrase a dime a dozen doesn't really apply, but they're very relatively available for everyone. He attempted to bridge the gap between the Sephardi and Ashkenazi communities. He often followed wildly, widely differing practices by referencing his contemporaries abroad and reflecting on their approaches to his own writing. He felt strongly that Torah scholars needed to show mutual recognition for one another, even when this is disagreed, lest their names be forgotten with the passage of time. Now, what do you mean by that? He felt strongly that Torah scholars needed to show mutual recognition for one another. In other words, they have to acknowledge each other, because the job of being a Torah scholar also is a political position because you have a certain path of understanding how things are being. There's a difference. You know, every Jew's got a different opinion. So there's other Torah scholars. So to recognize them, even when they disagree, lest their names be forgotten, because he said when these disagreements cause the, well, he says the names to be forgotten. Though his legal decision carried weight primarily amongst the Sephardi populaces, his Ashkenazi counterparts recognized his genius Helped, held him in high esteem and often quoted his rulings. For 50 years from his appointment until his death, he lectured for one hour daily on Torah law and Agudah, historical and, and uh, anecdotal material. He says Agudah is really different stories, kind of strange stories sometimes. In the Tzalat Leziri, the, the small synagogue. So he said the Tzalat Leziri. So I don't know exactly what that is, but Zir mean for me small, the small synagogue. Four times a, a, a year he lectured at the great synagogue, synagogue of Baghdad, built with dirt from the land of Israel. The synagogue was built from the dirt of the land of Israel. Hacham mm. and Yosef Chaim understood that cut and dry Torah law would not appeal to many. So the bulk of his discourses were coupled with Kabbalah and Agudah. So therefore, these, that's the part that we want to see. So he says he helped his followers make associations between biblical lore and the law so their hearts would be drawn to the wisdom of Torah and they would remember it. His seminal work, the Ben Ishrai, is based on the three-hour classes. 
he presented each Shabbat. He began each lecture with a Kabbalistic interpretation in simple language, one that anybody could understand in the Torah portion of the week, and then present a selection of related practical laws. Two important figures guided his work, Rabbi Sheba Bar Yochai, author of the Zohar, and Rabbi Isaac Luria, the Arizal. His approach, his approach was based on preservation of local traditions. Even in the local rulings, he would not recommend a change in local tradition unless there was compelling reason to do so. His rulings testified to his innovative reproach, which gave credence to local tradition and to Ashkenazi and Sephardi rulings alike because he was very much aware of what was going on in Ashkenaz. That's a little bit more to do. We'll do it. Now, the Ben Ishchai became the standard reference book for Torah law among Svardim. So if you go to Svardi synagogue, you'll see that the rabbi, after when the time is to make a little speech between Mincha and Mariv, uh, he'll, uh, he'll say a little bit of Ben Ishchai. It appealed to a wide audience, scholars and commoners alike, including women who were usually not provided a religious education. Due to its widespread, widespread popularity, Chacham Yosef Chaim came to be called by the name of his book, that is, the Ben Ish Chaim. Many stories testified to his greatness. On one occasion, a scholar from Baghdad visited the great rabbi in Jerusalem, Rabbi Yaakov Shaul Alishar. Why? To request his blessings. The elderly sage, sage responded, Why have you come to me? You have Chacham Yosef Chaim in Baghdad. There is no one like him in the world. Chacham Yosef Chaim deeply loved the land of Israel. He supported the Jewish settlement by printing all of his books there. And throughout his life gave money to the messengers from Israel who came to collect for the poor. In 1869, he journeyed to Israel, where he visited, visited the gravesides of numerous holy figures in Jerusalem and Hebron, and met with eminent Kabbalists. Though offered a rabbinical post there, he decided to re return to Iraq. He brought back with him a large stone to be placed at the entrance to the synagogue where he lectured, and it was stone from Israel. Days before his death, he died on the eighth day of Elul. Acham Yosef Chaim went on a pilgrimage to the grave of the prophet Ezekiel, and he became sick shortly afterwards. On the 13th of Elul, 1909, he died and was buried that same night. He was deeply mourned. His funeral was attended by over 10,000 people, Jews and non-Jews alike. Years after his death, Jews still made it practice to visit his gravesite every Friday. Despite his passing over a hundred years ago, he says his legacy is very much alive in the hearts of those who continue to live by his seminal work, the Ben Ishlai. Many of his disciples became great Jewish scholars who continued to disperse his teachings. The extensive work of Chacham Yosef Chaim encompasses all aspects of Judaism, that is, Torah, law, Kabbalah, question and answer, sermons, parables, proverbs, and prayers, liturgics, and poetry for Shabbat and holidays. His work reflects simultaneously broad knowledge of the sciences, medicine, astronomy, physics, and economics. His approach to Torah, though stringent, is imbued with love for its practice, and his followers, whose numbers continue to grow even today, revere his commitment to Torah law and the inspiration he brought to it. Many schools, particularly in Israel, have been built in his name. Thousands continue to glean from the wisdom of Acham Yosef Chaim, studying his books, but more importantly, living by them. So that's the background of the Ben Ishai. We know who we're going to be learning and what tremendous man he is. Today is a day of the nowadays that we have a tremendous blend in the Jewish community because there's so much communication between different elements. And you have the mixing now, people who come from the Far East and from the Middle East and from Israel and from America and, of course, the Europeans. We have Hasidim and we have Ashkenazim and then we have Sephardim, and then we have Temanim, 
and then we have Ethiopians. All of this is a tremendous mixture in the blessing of God. This is Barak Fleischmann, Tico and Elevator Cola.